Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is a no AC service call. Uh, the customer has said that the AC unit is running, 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 and uh, it's not getting cooler in the house. So I checked the uh, filter and checked the airflow. Everything's working on the inside of the house. And now I'm outside. The outdoor fan turns on, but the compressor does not turn on. So what I have now done is uh, I have pulled the electrical disconnect. You can see it right there on the top of the disconnect on the wall. And I do have my gauges hooked up right here. And that's how I determined that the compressor was not running because the pressures did not change, even though the, the uh, condenser fan up top uh, was turning on. So then I'll take a look inside the shroud, and you see that this electrical wire is completely burnt apart. So bad electrical connections, uh, possibly high amperage draw. So what I'm going to do is before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and test for resistance between here and the ground for the compressor wires. I'm going to actually disconnect these three compressor wires and check each one against the ground before I go ahead and fix this. This wire broke off of the closed electrical bar going across this single pole contactor. This is a 24 volt opening and closing a single contact. Okay, so this one is closed. So I am going to actually reuse this contactor right here. It burnt off right at the top. I'm just going to check the connection right in here. Obviously, the power is off right now, okay? I'm going to test for resistance values for the compressor just to make sure that that's safe before even bothering rehooking this back up onto the contactor. After I do that, I'm going to take an amperage draw and see uh, what happens to the amperage and see if it uh, climbs over time and if, if that's the problem. I'm obviously going to have to cut that back a little further. As you see, anytime you have a burnt connection, it usually burns back a little bit inside the wire. But I'm just going to first check the uh, resistance value between here and the ground. Okay, nothing there. That's good. These three wires right here, you can see, are actually heading to the compressor. What you do is you just follow it from here and look down from the top inside the outdoor unit and you can see what wires are coming to the electrical compartment from the compressor. This is a 240 volt single phase outdoor unit. Okay, nothing there, that's good. All right, nothing there either. So that's good. So we have no wire from the compressor actually uh, touching this ground right here. So that's a good thing. Now we're going to check resistance values. Okay, 1.2 ohms from the brown wire to the yellow wire. Now let's go from the brown wire to the orange wire, 0.7 ohms. So 1.2 from yellow to brown, 0.7 from orange to brown, 2.0 ohms of resistance. All right, so 1.2 plus 0.7 is 1.9, and that's actually what we have right here. You see it's varying just because I wasn't pressing in real hard, now I'm pressing in hard. So the highest resistance value was from yellow to orange, and that means that this is start to run. So that makes this one right here to here common to start because it had a the second highest resistance reading, and the lowest resistance reading was the orange wire to the brown wire, and that means that you're looking at common to run. So this has to be common because this wire is involved with the lower resistance readings. These two were the highest, so this is start and run. When I measured the resistance readings from yellow to brown, that was a higher resistance reading. So that means that this is start and that's common. And the lowest resistance readings were read from here to here. So that makes this common and this run. 
So the resistance readings match up. It's the two resistance readings equal the one resistance reading of run to start. So that compressor is looking good uh, resistance wise. So I'm going to go ahead and rehook this back up and then we're going to start the unit up. At that point, I'm going to go ahead and take an amperage draw. This yellow wire right here was also hooked to the Herm as well, and that is the start wire. All right, that's a little loose, so I'm going to pull that back out. I'm going to crimp that and then put it back in. These wire strippers and cutters are an invaluable tool. you got to have these. Uh, I have my crimping section. I can cut bolts down in here strip wires, cut wires. Uh, this is, I always use this part right here to pull the wire terminals off. So um, indispensable tool right here. I do have that list in the description below. All right, that one went on very well. Now let's see how much length we have with this brown wire. We're gonna cut it back a little bit more. Unscrew our screw over here. I'm just going to take this screw completely out. Once again, the electric is off. I'm going to take a wire brush and just clean up that contact right there. That's pretty good. I'm going to cut this wire back as well. Anytime you have stranded wires, you're going to twist them or you're going to tin them just to make them kind of more solid. You want to make sure that you avoid cutting into the outside of the wires right here. So I kind of ripped that. Uh, I could have also used this 10 gauge area right here, as you see that that fits right there. Once again, we're going to twist this up. I'm going to put this one into a crimp connector so that this one goes underneath of the screw. I'm going to put this crimp connector right into the crimpers right here like this. And we're going to set that wire right in there. Crimp down. I like to crimp it twice just to make sure. Pull on it. Make sure it's nice and snug. That's nice and tight. I'm going to put a little antioxidant compound on these wires just to make sure it makes a good connection. All right, we're nice and tight now. Looks like we're ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. And it started right up. We have an amperage reading of 
15.5 amps. Somebody else wrote on this unit up here in amperage reading that they must have taken at 14.5 amps previously. I see that there's a new capacitor right here that's installed. And now you see our pressures right here. Low side is looking at 64 PSIG. High side, 230. This is R22. The unit is equipped with a thermostatic expansion valve. Amperage reading 14.93 presently. The fins are not in great shape. They're getting kind of old, so I'm not going to touch them too, too much. I don't want them to fall off. We have a pretty bad salt uh, concentration here or near the coast, right near the shore of the Atlantic Ocean. As you see, the pressure will rise. we got to give this about five to ten minutes for a system with a thermostatic expansion valve in order to check the refrigerant charge. We're going to take this pressure over here and we're going to convert it to the green inner saturated temperature ring. And whatever that number is, minus the actual temperature on the small liquid line that's located right down here. You see I have a, a temp probe right here. I don't know if you can make that out or not. I have another multimeter right here that I'll take my temperature reading with. Presently it is 108.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, I'm going to let this run for a little bit while I fill out my service ticket. Presently, we are reading 15.6 amps, and we've held that for about five minutes now. 15.56 uh, or 58 amps. All right, so after about seven minutes now, uh, our vapor pressure is at 72 PSIG with a coil, evaporator coil, saturated temperature of 43 degrees. So it's 43 degrees in the middle of the saturated coil. We're not in danger of freezing or anything like that. The head pressure is fairly high for an R22 system. That's due to the fins uh, being degraded. The sear of this outdoor unit is kind of small, and this outdoor unit is also in direct sunlight. So that's not beneficial for this unit either. Presently, the saturated temperature in the middle of this condenser coil right here is 122 degrees, right in the middle of the condenser coil. And it's reading about 269 PSIG, okay, uh, worth of pressure. 269 PSIG, R22 system. So, down here is the rating plate. On this rating plate, there is no TXV subcooling rating. So we're going to be going with 8 to 12 degrees of subcooling. What that means is it's this temperature right here minus the, the actual temperature that we have taped on the small liquid line. All right, so you see that we have a temp sensor actually taped on the liquid line. Presently, we're reading 112 degrees Fahrenheit. So this system has a TXV. It's a comfort cooling system. It does not have a target TXV subcooling rating that we're going to be shooting for. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a target subcooling of 8 to 12 degrees. So if we're going to be checking subcooling to check to make sure that the refrigerant charge is correct, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the high side gauge. The high side gauge is we're actually measuring the liquid refrigerant temperature after it exits this outdoor condenser. So right here you see it's reading 122, 123 degrees. Presently we're reading 113 degrees. We're actually going down a little bit, about 112 right now. Okay, so we have roughly about 10 degrees of subcooling. So that's what we're looking for, right about 10 degrees of subcooling. Now what I'm going to do to confirm the refrigerant charge is I'm going to go inside the house. So uh, what I'm looking for is 18 to 21 degree temperature decrease between the return air and the supply air. And that will confirm that our refrigerant charge is correct as well as having the correct subcooling. That's how you do it. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.